a mix-up in presents from Tiffany's leads Rachel to her soulmate. An interesting love story between two people who are already in relationships. When they meet, they realize that they're not with the people they should be with. The story begins on a beautiful cold winter night in New York. The Christmas spirit fills the city as bright lights and decorations stand out from the small shops to the big buildings. Among those stores, we get to see a beautifully lit Tiffany's and lots of customers in it. A woman working there brings some engagement rings to Ethan. Ethan is picking out a ring as he wants to propose to his girlfriend Vanessa. He is there with his daughter, and they pick the ring together. The woman brings them cushion and princess cut rings, but his daughter, Daisy, asks for a presidential cut. The lady brings out a beautiful shiny ring and they settle on that one. They go to the register when another customer walks in, looking for a present for his girlfriend, something more affordable. Daisy and Ethan go out of the store, and while Ethan's fixing her scarf, the guy that asked for a present for his girlfriend pushes Daisy without care. Soon after, a loud thud can be heard, and we see the rude guy on the ground. He has been hit by a car. Ethan goes to help him, and thankfully, there is an ambulance nearby. Two blue Tiffany bags sit on the ground as Ethan checks whether the guy is well. When he sees that the guy is fine, he picks up his bag and goes to his daughter. Meanwhile, Rachel is preparing dinner. While adding different spices and perfecting her dish, her best friend Terry walks in and jokingly asks whether she's talking about her food again. Rachel laughs and says that she is talking to her soup. Terry hands her some lemons and Rachel thanks her for buying them. After looking around, her best friend notices the framed photo of their restaurant's menu and congratulates her for their success. Rachel says that she has to change as she is going to celebrate her anniversary with her boyfriend, and asks Terry to look over the soup. Looking around the kitchen, she jokes about Rachel being capable of always making a mess. Rachel comes out in a beautiful flowery dress and tells her that she should get going because her boyfriend, Gary, will be arriving soon. It is noticeable that Terry doesn't like Gary as she asks Rachel whether she helped him get into the New York paper. Rachel says that she talked to the main editor, and after sending him some food, he had agreed to put him in the paper. Terry thinks that Rachel is too kind and forgiving towards Gary and that he is just a careless guy. Rachel's phone rings and it's Gary, she answers the phone but is surprised to hear someone else on the line. A worried look can be noticed on Rachel's face as she listens to someone telling her some bad news. On the other side of New York, Daisy and Ethan sit together in the living room. He can't seem to find his phone and asks Daisy not to tell Vanessa as she calls her from the iPad. Vanessa answers and Daisy tells her that she loves New York, the Christmas spirit, and the snow, and even tells her about the guy being hit. Vanessa says that she remembers all of those things as she is from New York but she doesn't like them. She will be arriving the following day and that leaves Daisy and Ethan to do some fun activities themselves. After hanging up the call, Daisy goes quiet, so Ethan asks her whether everything's okay. Daisy is worried about the man that got hit and wants to make sure he's alright. She asks her father whether they can visit the man at the hospital in the morning, and even though he's hesitant he says that they can. The guy that got hit is Gary, Rachel's fiancé, as we see her visiting him in the hospital. She asks the nurses whether his concussion is bad, and they say that his concussion is mild, and that he will be fine. Gary asks whether he can leave, but the nurse tells him that he has to stay until the night because they have to do an MRI scan on him. He doesn't remember what happened the night he got hit, so they have to scan his brain for memory loss. Gary tells Rachel to leave and go to the restaurant as he will be fine. Rachel takes his stuff and leaves but once she's in the hall, overhears Daisy and Ethan asking for the guy that got hit the previous night. She approaches them and says that Gary has a concussion but is fine. The nurse at the counter tells them that they can't be having conversations in the middle of the hall, so the three of them sit down at the hospital cafe. Daisy's an interesting child as she asks Rachel different questions about her and Gary, one of them being whether Rachel is a stripper, because she was still dressed in the dress from the previous night. Ethan stops his daughter from talking and asks Rachel whether she resides in New York. Rachel says that she resides in Queens, and Daisy tells her that they used to reside in New York, but plan on coming back. Ethan is a creative writer at UCLA and his daughter tells Rachel that he has a book as well. Daisy has already revealed enough when she mentions the engagement, and Ethan says that it's time for them to go home. Before Rachel heads out she invites them to come to her bakery Galini and restaurant Little Italy. Ethan laughs and thanks her for the offer as he jokes about being the biggest consumer of bread in the world. A blue Tiffany bag catches Rachel's attention as she throws Gary's bag of stuff on the bed when she gets back home. Curious, she takes the box out of the bag but can't bring herself to open it. She spends the day looking at the box and not knowing whether to open it or not. When she finally decides to open it, she is cut off by a phone call, so what's in the box remains a mystery. Ethan goes to his meeting with his friend, they will try to bring him back to the Simon and Shuster family, so Ethan can continue writing and they will print his work. Rachel talks to Terry on the phone and Terry tells her that she has to open the box. Rachel doesn't want to because she will feel awful about it, plus, she doesn't like tiny bows. Terry says that her girlfriend can open it, but Rachel is afraid of there being an engagement ring, as she doesn't think she's ready for marriage. She decides not to open the box as she hopes that Gary had gotten her something else from Tiffany's. Trying to ease the situation with lame excuses such as him buying her a yo-yo or a pen from Tiffany's, Rachel goes to work and tries not to think about it. 
Later on in the evening, Ethan is left alone as he receives a text from Vanessa, saying that her flight is delayed, and a text from his daughter, asking him to stay at her friend's for dinner. Not knowing what to do, Ethan takes a stroll around the Christmas market when he spots Rachel's bakery. He decides to visit it, and when he gets in, he sees a crowd of people being rude, and Rachel not being able to take all of their orders on time. Rachel starts telling one of her childhood stories to the customer, and he rudely interrupts her, demanding his order. Ethan steps in and asks her to continue, and Rachel is more than surprised to see him there. After seeing that she can't make all the orders herself, Ethan offers to help her, and even though she declines at first, she lets him work with her. After selling different pastries and coffee, Ethan and Rachel sit in the quiet shop and rest. He asks her whether there's news from Gary, and she tells him that he will be getting a scan in the next hour. Rachel asks him about Daisy and Vanessa, and he tells her that he is alone for the night. Leftover hot chocolate sits on the machine, so Rachel asks Ethan whether he wants some spiced up hot chocolate. Not being sure what she means, Ethan laughs and says that he will drink whatever the chef recommends. Rachel pours them a cup of hot chocolate but adds some liquor to spice it up. They toast, and Ethan says that the hot chocolate is very good. As a way of saying thank you for helping Gary, Rachel hands Ethan a loaf of fresh bread but notices his face drop. She asks him whether something's wrong, and he says that he used to bake bread with his late wife and their daughter. He jokes that the bread was awful, but the memories are beautiful. Rachel asks him what she was like, and Ethan describes his late wife as a song he wanted to play over and over again. The risk of love is a loss, says Rachel, as she remembers her late mother's words. The power cuts off, so they decide to take a walk. Ethan asks her how she knew what she wanted to do in life, and she tells him that she has been falling in love with cooking since she was a child. She says that cooking is messy, but something beautiful comes out of it. Curious, Rachel asks him about his first book, and he calls it the Titanic of books because it went terribly. She comforts him, saying that her first restaurant had been a flop as well, but her restaurant Galini had been a success because it has always been her dream. She pulls out a croissant-looking pastry and Ethan assumes that it is a croissant. Rachel looks at him offended and says that the pastry is a cornetto. It tastes good because it was made with love, not strategy. She advises Ethan to start doing things with his heart instead of his mind, and the words stick to Ethan. He smiles at her and admits that he has an idea, but he has to show it to her, instead of telling her about it. She agrees and they go to his secret spot. He is more than excited to show her the place and doesn't believe that no one's been there. Rachel laughs awkwardly, and he asks her whether she's been there. She tries lying but admits that she loves coming to that place. Ethan admits that the place had inspired his novel, a story about the light and dark, based in New York City. A girl finds her imaginary friends in the shadows of the city building. It is about her finding beauty in the shadows. Rachel stares at him in awe and says that the place is his cornetto. A phone ringing interrupts their moment and it's Gary. Rachel heads to the hospital and Ethan goes to pick Vanessa up from the airport. The next morning, Gary can be seen waking up while Rachel is preparing pies in the kitchen. He greets her and wishes her good morning. He takes a bite of the eggs and says that they're delicious, but asks her to take a break from cooking so they can open their presents. Rachel panics and tries to make up lame excuses not to open the gifts, but Gary insists. As Gary and Rachel are opening their gifts, Daisy, Ethan, and Vanessa are doing the same. Gary and Ethan's gifts are last, and both of them get surprised once they see different gifts than what they've bought. Rachel opens the blue box and doesn't know what to say. Gary gets closer to her and is just as surprised as her. He gets the ring out of the box and Rachel asks him whether he's sure. Gary snaps back and admits that he doesn't remember when he bought the ring but is sure that he wants to propose to her. He says that the three years they have spent together are more than enough for him to be sure that he wants to marry her. He proposes to her and she says yes. As the couple celebrates their engagement, Ethan goes quiet once he sees Vanessa open a box of earrings, and is shocked not to see the ring there. Oblivious to the whole plan, Vanessa thanks him for the gift and goes to order some food. Daisy asks Ethan where the ring is, and he remembers putting the Tiffany bag down when he went to help Gary, and realizes that he must have grabbed his bag. After the celebration of their engagement, Rachel can be seen cleaning the apartment. She picks up her coat and feels something in it, a small bottle of liquor she had put in Ethan's hot chocolate. This brings a smile to her face and she decides to keep it in her drawer. Terry stares at the ring in disbelief as Rachel tells everyone that she is engaged. She can't believe that Gary had been able to afford such an expensive ring, and asks whether he had done something illegal to get it. They congratulate Rachel on the engagement, and Terry's girlfriend asks whether they'll be throwing a party, but Rachel says that she doesn't like big parties. They get back to work, and Terry asks Rachel about the text she had sent her the previous night. Rachel tells her about the secret place and the river she had visited with Ethan. Terry is surprised to hear about Ethan, and Rachel tells her that she had only killed some time with Ethan while waiting for Gary. She is suspicious about them having a romantic stroll, but Rachel tells her that there's nothing about it. Ethan goes back to the bakery to tell Rachel about the mix-up but instead finds a co-worker there. She tells him to look for her at the restaurant and he leaves. He comes back home and hands Vanessa and Daisy two tickets for a dance company called Alvin Alley. He wants them to have a girl's day so he'll be able to start writing in peace. Daisy understands what her father is trying to do and agrees to distract Vanessa until the ring is found. 
Terry and Rachel are loading up a truck full of pastries in front of the restaurant when Ethan comes to them. He goes up to Terry and asks for Rachel, but when she asks who he is, Rachel comes from behind him. Ethan tells her that he is looking for Gary to check on how he's doing. Rachel will be grabbing lunch with Gary and offers to give him Ethan's number, but Ethan suggests joining them. Gary checks his purchases at Tiffany's because he is concerned about how the ring got to him, as well. On the site, it says that he has purchased a pair of earrings, but how the ring ended up in the box remains a mystery. Right as he's about to leave, his coworker asks him whether he can tattoo another customer, and even though he has to meet Rachel, he agrees. Rachel and Ethan sit down at the restaurant and he notices his ring on her. He says wow and she realizes that he is referring to the ring. She tells him that she got engaged on Christmas morning with the most beautiful ring in the world. Oblivious to the whole thing, she asks him how his engagement had gone. Ethan stares at her, not knowing what to say, and just says that he hasn't proposed, but plans to. Rachel receives a text from Gary, saying that he won't make it and suggesting she and Ethan stay. Ethan asks her how she and Gary met and she tells him that he did her first tattoo. He asks whether she thinks Gary is a good guy and whether he would return $5 if he were to find it. Rachel tries to describe Gary to him, so she tells him the story about her bracelet. After getting tattooed, Rachel noticed that her bracelet wasn't on her arm, it is a bracelet from her mother, so it has sentimental meaning. She panicked and went to the station and she saw Gary there. She was impressed that he had traveled eight stops to bring her bracelet back. So she tells Ethan that Gary is the type of guy that would bring those five dollars back to its owner. Daisy and Vanessa seem to be enjoying their walk when they bump into Brian. Brian is the representative of a company Ethan has agreed to work with. Vanessa is surprised when Brian tells her that Ethan has decided to come work with them. That means that Ethan will have to stay in New York. Gary decides to stop by the restaurant once he finishes his work. He has brought flowers for Rachel but is surprised to find out that she isn't there. Terry tells him that she hasn't seen her since she left to go to lunch with him. Ethan and Rachel take a stroll after dinner, and she tells him that she has been thinking about the book he plans to write. He laughs and hopes that he will start writing because all he does is procrastinate and doubt himself. Rachel tells him that he should go for it as she wants to go by a bookstore one day and see his book there. A beautiful melody stops them in their tracks. A band singing soul music catches their attention and they stop to enjoy it. Both of them say they love the song at the same time and that makes them smile. They start walking back and Rachel stops to say sorry that Gary didn't show up but wants to ask Ethan another question. She feels that he came to her for other reasons, not just to see Gary, so she asks him about it. Ethan doesn't know what to say, so he asks her whether she can go home by herself. He wishes her well and hopes everything works out for her before walking off and leaving her alone on the sidewalk. Rachel goes back home and sees that Gary had called her multiple times but decides not to call him back. Ethan is researching Gary on the internet when Vanessa comes in. She asks him why he hasn't answered her calls, and he admits that he has lost his phone again. She asks him whether he has something to tell her, and he says there's nothing to worry about. Vanessa tells him that he has been absent on a trip that he planned, and he admits that he knows that she's there for him, but he only says okay. Ethan goes to the tattoo parlor where Gary works, the next morning, and they finally meet. Gary thanks him for his help and Ethan says that it's nothing. Gary asks how he can help him and Ethan says that he has something of his. He tries to act oblivious, but Ethan tells him that he wants his ring back. Gary asks him to stay away from his fiancée, and that if he lost something, it isn't his problem. He walks away, and Ethan is left without his ring. Rachel walks around the city and thinks about everything that's going on. Her engagement, her connection with Ethan, and the strange feelings she's had about him. After walking for a while, she finds herself in front of Tiffany's store and decides to go in. At the register, she asks the lady to help her learn how to take care of the ring. The lady at the register tells her that they offer a cleaning kit, and Rachel says she will take one. The lady comments on her ring and says that she knew Rachel would say yes. She remembers every ring she sells and says that hers was a tough choice. She congratulates all three of them, and Rachel asks her what she means by three. The lady remembers the name of her fiancé's daughter, and once she says that it's Daisy, Rachel's heart breaks. She is shocked and doesn't say anything as she leaves the store immediately. Baking is a form of meditation for Rachel, so she goes to the bakery to calm down. She ends up baking more than enough batches of bread, so Terry knows something must be wrong. Gary comes to the bakery, and Terry asks him what he had done to Rachel. He admits that he hasn't done anything to her on that day but the previous night had been a bad one for him. Gary goes to the back and sees Rachel baking, he starts apologizing for not making it the other night but says that the clients he's receiving are because of her article in the New York magazine. He starts complimenting her about how good she is to him and how he appreciates that about her. Rachel stops kneading and asks Gary how he got the ring. She wonders how he managed to get such an extravagant ring. Gary admits that he has messed up, but knew for sure that he wanted to marry her, after seeing her with the ring in her hand. 
She asks him about his plan and he says he didn't have one, but seeing her with the ring made him realize, being with her is the thing he wants the most in life. Rachel says she will be returning the ring but asks Gary whether he wants to marry her without the ring or the concussion. He says that he would love to and asks whether she can give him another chance. He suggests they have their engagement celebration at the New Year's Eve party and Rachel agrees. Daisy and Ethan come by the restaurant and Terry greets them. Daisy goes off to see Rachel in the back and Ethan stays with Terry. She asks him whether he has something to tell her and decides to tell her everything. Daisy is excited to see Rachel making bread and offers to help. Rachel tells her to grab an apron and goes to talk to Gary privately. She says that she'll handle the situation with Ethan and he sneaks out through the back door. Terry is shocked to find out what Gary did and Ethan tells her that he tried but didn't want to break Rachel's heart. Rachel and Daisy are having a fun time as they prepare the buns for baking. Daisy asks how long it takes for Rachel to make a loaf of bread and Rachel tells her that it takes a while. While she waits for the bread to bake, Rachel spends her time thinking, which is something Daisy does as well. Rachel tells Daisy that she had been the same age as her when she lost her mother. She asks Daisy whether she likes to talk about her mother or if it makes her sad. Daisy tells her that it makes her happy and sad, so Rachel shares her trick with her. Daisy has to find one thing she did with her mother that was special and do it every year. The little girl smiles and mentions the Christmas tradition they had of picking ugly sweaters for each other. They stopped doing it when she passed away, and Rachel tells her that she has to continue doing that tradition in her mother's name. Ethan comes in and asks Daisy whether he can talk to Rachel alone, so the little girl leaves. Rachel tells Ethan that she knows everything and it is insane, so she apologizes for it. Ethan apologizes for not being able to tell her, but Rachel thanks him for being a good person. She says that Gary will reach out for him as she hands him a bag of cornets. Ethan thanks her for everything and wishes her a good life before he leaves. Rachel watches him go as tears fill her eyes and a sad smile forms on her face. Terry tries to tell Rachel about what Gary did as she isn't aware that Rachel knows, but Rachel tells her that she knows everything. Terry asks what their status is, and Rachel says that they're still together. She says that she knows there's something between her and Ethan, but Rachel tells her that he only wanted his ring back. Rachel says that Gary is not perfect but doesn't feel like she should turn on him and believes that he will get better. Daisy, Ethan, and Vanessa sit down to have dinner, and the loaf from Rachel's bakery sits on the table. Vanessa asks Daisy where they went in the morning and Ethan says that they went to the bakery. Daisy says they got the bread that's on the table from there, so Ethan and Vanessa go to break a piece from it. They pull on the bread from both sides, and soon enough, it breaks in half as a ring falls from it. Vanessa is in shock as she waits for Ethan to ask her the marriage question anxiously. He asks her to marry him, and she says yes. Excitedly, Vanessa goes to call people and set up some venues to see, when they go back to Los Angeles. Daisy asks Ethan why he hadn't told Vanessa about New York, and he says that they should focus on the happy moments only. Time goes by, and both Ethan and Rachel enjoy their relationships. Even though they're happy, they can't help but think about each other and the time they spent together. Right before New Year's, Vanessa calls Rachel's restaurant to ask whether they have any reservations available for New Year's. Terry tells her that they have a private event, but once she finds out that she and Ethan were engaged, her mind changes. She makes a reservation and expects them to be there at 8pm. The night of New Year's comes, and we can see that the party is being prepared at Rachel's restaurant. Gary comes in before 8, and everyone is surprised to see him on time. He introduces his cousin Finn, and right off the bat, Finn gives off a creepy vibe. He calls Rachel hot as he stares at her up and down. Finn starts talking about how weird it is they haven't met because he was with Gary the first time he and Rachel met. Rachel smiles and Finn mentions a girl named Amber. When Gary comes back, Finn turns to him and says that life is crazy, because Gary had planned to hook up with Amber in Queens, but met his future wife instead. Rachel gives him a death stare and they go to the kitchen to have a private talk. She can't believe that he let her think that he came for her. He says that it's not fair and that it was three years ago. Rachel argues and says that he has lied to her so many times, and their relationship is not working anymore. She admits that she can't do it anymore as she walks out of the kitchen. Ethan is surprised to see them get to the restaurant but Vanessa tells him that there's a surprise for him as she walks in. Right as they walk in, they see Rachel and Gary having a fight. Rachel stops and Vanessa says that she has made a reservation. Daisy introduces Gary and Rachel to Vanessa, and she introduces herself as Ethan's fiancé. Gary jumps in and tells Rachel that everything had worked out like they wanted it to because Vanessa got her ring back. Rachel tells him to shut up and Vanessa asks whether they're talking about her ring. Little Daisy tries to save the situation and says that Gary and Rachel are getting married, but both of them say that they have broken up. Ethan is surprised and Gary asks him why it matters to him whether they're engaged or not. Vanessa asks Ethan what's going on and he tells her the whole truth. Vanessa realizes that Rachel had known and it was she who put the ring in the bread. She asks Ethan whether he meant to propose on that day and he tries to explain that he did plan to propose but she leaves. The new year comes and Ethan and Vanessa can be seen arguing in the living room. She feels humiliated and he says that he planned to propose on Christmas Day, but the whole situation with the ring happened. 
Vanessa asks him about his job offer with Brian and he admits that he didn't tell her because he feels like she isn't supportive. She asks him to forget everything and be honest with her about what he really wants. He sits down and says that he wants to write another book, take another shot, and move to New York. She sits next to him and admits that she hates it in New York, it's too much for her, and even if she were to stay with them she can't move back. Rachel sits with Terry at the restaurant and asks her why she took Vanessa's reservation on the night of her engagement party. Terry says she doesn't know why she did that but had always had a bad feeling about Gary. She apologizes and Rachel accepts her apology. Some time goes by, and Ethan and Daisy can be seen in the living room. Daisy asks him whether he planned to marry Vanessa because she was going to be a good mother and role model for her. She wants her father to marry someone he loves. She looks at him, and he notices that she wants to tell him something. Finally, Daisy tells him that he needs to fight for Rachel, so they get up and come up with a plan. While Terry's on a call at the restaurant on a very busy day, she receives flowers and thinks that they're from her girlfriend. Daisy and Ethan had delivered the flowers to Rachel but Ethan had lost his phone, so they agree to wait for her at the bridge. The whole time they're waiting, Rachel is completely oblivious as to what's going on. Terry's girlfriend comes to the restaurant and Terry thanks her for the flowers. She looks at the flowers and says that she hasn't sent her any flowers. After reading the card, they realize that Ethan had written a note for Rachel to meet him at the bridge. They give the flowers to Rachel, and she rushes out of the restaurant immediately. She tries to run there, but ends up catching a taxi. Meanwhile, Daisy and Ethan are losing all hope. The little girl begs her father to stay for five more minutes, and that's when they hear Rachel calling out to them. Ethan admits that they don't know each other, but he has decided to think with his heart, and his heart has led him to her. They lean in for a kiss and finally give in. We are taken to a year later, where we can see a Christmas party at the restaurant. Everyone is happy, and even Ethan and Daisy have joined the crew. Ethan clinks the glass and gets everyone's attention. He gives special thanks to Rachel for preparing the delicious food. He calls her a beautiful talented woman, who has helped him a lot. She is his Cornetto, and he doesn't know what he'll do without her. A band comes in, and they play Rachel's favorite song. Ethan knows that their story has been messy, but doesn't want to focus on that, as he's only focused on the outcome. He asks Rachel to marry him, as he pulls out the ring that started it all. She says yes, and all of them cheer and dance with the wonderful news, into the new year. 